Hello, everybody. It's John from Veganism Kills. Uh, I just got off a little conversation in the comment field of uh, those annoying vegans. And uh, I'm doing some research. And I'm going to have to bring my daughter in. Gia, what's the matter? My daughter. Okay. Now, what I discovered is uh, it's obvious that the vegan diet is high in uh, oxalates, and a raw uh, vegan diet is even worse. Okay? And if you keep eating a, a, a high oxalate diet, sooner or later you're going to get hyperoxaluria. It can be caused by an inherited genetic disorder or an intestinal disease or eating too many oxalate rich foods and the foods that are the highest in oxalate are the vegan diet um, and you can see it can lead to primary uh, hyperoxaluria and you can check this out by these websites that will just tell you that now if you're eating carrots, spinach uh, and all these raw vegetables, you're, you're asking to, to go into primary hyperoxaluria, all right? Basically, you are, what you're doing a big bit. Uh oh. <laughs> yes, yes, my daughter understands. And again, that's what, what my job has always been, Mr. Russo. We're, we're looking at this. Could you find the experts in, in, in the field? And get us the information. They used to work for these uh, high-end investment firms. They want to know what people are talking about, find out, break it down, put it in layman's terms. I got friends that are heart surgeons. I got friends that are nuclear physicists. I got friends all over the world in the higher echelons of academia. If I don't know something, they're glad to help me. And in return, uh, I will sh share what I learned. It's it's an information swap. It just go. It, it, there's a lot of it going on in, in the, the clubhouses that people aren't aware of. Um, it, it's I'm pretty sure that I, I I told vegans well you're telling people basically to eat these high oxalate diets, which which veganism is maybe one of the highest diets and oxalates you can actually partake in, and what you're asking for is basically to have your kidneys shut down. That's why you see these uh, uh, the decline in people's uh, teeth, the teeth falling out, and these raw vegans, they're getting skinny, they get sick very easy. Any uh, uh, germ that comes from outside the body when the body's already under stress by hot, high oxalate rich foods, you're going to get very sick. And this is why I think people are getting sick. I think these o oxalates are basically are uh, acting like, almost like, uh, if you look at them, like a heavy metal in the body, right? A, a heavy metal like mercury or or uh, some other uh, overdose. It's like you took too many um, iron pills. If you were iron deficient, you went overboard. You're gonna be uh, you're gonna be getting sick from that. Uh, that's why they keep telling you uh, to eat a balanced diet. Which, which means don't eliminate vegetables and go full carnosaur or whatever they call themselves, carnies or whatever. The, ve the, ve the vegans invented a derogatory term for people that eat meat. They call them <laughs> carnies. And I'm like, well, you're really that. not helping. Yeah, you have to make them look bad. And you're really not helping anybody's health. A balanced diet consists of eating from the four major food groups so you can get proper nutrition. Now what I see is just people just uh, separate them themselves as a hunter or a gatherer. No, a healthy human being does both. A hunter-gatherer, that is actually a thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is my, my daughter who's nine years old and she's at the top of her class. She's uh, beaten. I don't like to brag, but she's in fourth grade. She was beating all the kids in sixth grade in their chess matches. 
She's a very she gathers I her intelligence from my genetic genome. <laughs> yeah. And uh I think if if you guys you got the information is out there and you gotta make a uh a uh, uh, well-informed decision. If you don't know, you should be able to go to sources and find out. Now, this this information comes from where I get most of my like, info is something? from the Mayo Clinic. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so these vegans, some of them like are scared of killing animals. Do you think that animals care about you? They're animals. <laughs> Yes, well, unfortunately, gee, you're nine years old and realize that, but there's a lot of people who don't. They have an ideal plugged into their head, and they won't see no f no further than those intellectual horse binders. So they're not gonna they're not gonna make it into the future. That those those people will become Darwin award winners. The do other words, they're dooming themselves that their their last name will not carry on for the next maybe two or three generations, and that's it. They're gone. Their lineage is gone. So, <clears throat> explaining things to my daughter. Now, I don't want people getting mad at me. These other people, all of it's not true. I just gave you the list from the Mayo Clinic that's telling you that uh, there's at least 50, 50 nutrients that vegan scramble to get and I'm sorry uh, if, if you're taking supplements let me tell you something about supplements you better start uh, if, you, if you truly want to stay vegan when you've sourced your supplements make sure what those supplements are derived from make sure you're not taking a B12 that was uh, derived from a chemical process from coal tar because th that's not a, a, a supplement that's an actual inhibitor that will actually block your body and link to the uh, uh, link to your B12 receptor and block it. All in the meantime, sending a false signal uh, that you are getting enough B12 when you're not. So uh, if you don't, you don't have to listen to me. Go over to the Mayo Clinic. They've been a, a lot longer than at this, a lot longer than Dr. Gregor. All right. They have more qualified people. They're of a higher caliber than Dr. Gregor. Way higher caliber. They don't just rely on one peer review. These guys will not release anything unless it's been peer reviewed. Okay? And that's numerous peers. These people got a, a high caliber reputation. And they will not put it on the line. Um... Also, well, it's a little unfair because I got access to, like, the dean of St. John's University. He lives in the same building as I do. Uh, I know some clients of mine. They're the deans of Harvard, and if he's very brilliant. And if I have any questions, I could just ask him, and he'll tell me, uh, you know, we'll exchange. He asks me certain information from my field. I get it from his field. We share that's what intelligent people do. That's how you build up stuff, is intelligent people putting things together and building it up. Veganism has uh, too many uh, holes in it, and especially this. You know, you know something? I got to actually think, when those children, one of them starved to death in New York City. You see, this is what, what happened to them. They died of starvation. And the first thing that usually shuts down when you die of starvation is your kidneys. So, I, I don't want people to get sick. You might get offended because of your activism, your, your over your head in this activism. But I'm sorry, activists shouldn't be working against our supply chain of food. They're basically trying to take over our supply chain of food and eliminate certain products out of it. And they're actually going to end up exposing people to more contaminants. It's not like you can't get a disease from eating vegetables. Ask all the people who caught it. Uh, remember when they stripped all the shelves of the spinach? They took the spinach off there? Of course, it was given E. coli and salmonella. Yeah. And every other... Yeah. So let's, let's not put ourselves in the... Uh, our head in the vegan sand and realize what we're doing here. All right? We're obligated omnivores. A lot of people says, yes, we can exist on vegans. Yes, 
but what quality of life do you have being veganism? And a lot of these, that's why 84% of vegans leave after their first year, and a third of them of that number leave in their third month. You guys got to work harder. You can't present this as 100% as, as nutritional. The facts state from people who know way more than your uh, high priest of veganism, and they're telling you no. And plus, some, some of those people have a spotty check it past that I've been looking into it, and I don't like what I'm seeing. So don't take this as an insult. Start looking into this stuff. You do not want to put yourself in jeopardy. And for the men out there, if you're looking to have kids, this isn't the diet for you. Can you imagine you have sperm and you your your heart your your you got high oxalate uh, uh, I guess you can call it oxidosis and your your partner has high oxidosis. Don't you think that might uh, contribute to some kind of birth defect to the child? So that's all I got to say. I'm sorry if you guys are getting angry. You know, activists get angry. I, I've noticed that. If you if you were anything to do with nutrition, you would get angry. You would just go look at the research. And people are getting angry at you guys because you're trying to take over the food supply chain and start eliminating, you know, part of the healthy omnivore diet. And we don't want to end up like 84% of you vegans. We can, No, we're not going to allow it. We're not going to allow it. You guys better stop your activism. You better walk off. You better stop bothering the farmers. You, this is just part of the backlash that's coming at you guys for your militant-style vegans out there that are going over there and disturbing people from making a living and disturbing the supply chain. People aren't going to take it anymore. It's not going to end up well. All right, I'm out of here.